when you first read the script, what were your thoughts? I, I cried, I cried the first time reading the script. It really touches on the fact that love really is this really broad spectrum, you know? There, there's not just one right way. There's not just, you know, one kind. It's interesting, I think when I was first sent the little kind of summary about what the movie was about, kind of whatever assumptions I had of what it was gonna be of like this, I mean, a typical like kind of teen romance, I didn't think that it was that at all. I thought it was almost like a elevated, more sophisticated story. It just happened to be involving people in high school. And I thought it was a really kind of breath of fresh air because I don't think there's that many teen movies I can think of that kind of focus on like just the platonic friendship. You go through life and you see all these movies and they have this theme of finding your person and you know, everything always ending up the way that you hope and dream that it would. And what this really focuses on is like, you know, you're gonna find people along that journey in doing that, that you're really gonna connect with and that are kind of your soulmate in a weird way as well, you know? It, it, it really is a breath of fresh air because you, you just really see that relationship transform, but then you still kind of see the, the romantic love aspect of it as well, you know? It really has both and they both like, they grab you, you know? I was even thinking like, you know, when all your friends or family ask me, so what's the movie about? What, what kind of genre is it? I actually think more, it was more of like a coming of age movie than a, like love story per se. Do you know what I mean? Because I think for Aster and Ellie and Paul, kind of each of them over the course of the story kind of figure out who they are more and kind of grow up and say like, this is who I want to be and, and kind of all come out of their shell. But Trig, I mean, what makes him so you know, really larger than life. He kind of lives in his own world, you know? He's like incessantly sunny and happy and blissfully unaware. And I always said with Aster, it's just the way he sees his life is like, well, I'm the most popular guy, she's the prettiest girl, like that's what we do. And then we get married and I take over my dad's business and it's gonna be just like high school and everything's gonna be great. Yeah. And it's not that he's, I, I think a bad boyfriend to Aster, it's just he doesn't, he just doesn't, deal on that level of, of emotion or see the full complexities of, of, of her. Do you know what I mean? Like he's just not that kind of person. And I think what's in interesting about Trigg too is he's not that stereotypical mean popular guy though. Like you don't have really any sort of, I think, malicious intent with anybody. You're not a mean guy. You're just kind of in your own world in a way. What would you say your favorite scene in the film was? It has to be the hot springs. We felt so comfortable in kind of bearing our souls to each other. But what's so beautiful, I think, about Ellie and Aster's relationship is that, I mean, there's just so much nonverbal communication, this nonverbal understanding of each other. That is such a beautiful thing, um, you know, to, to find that person that you just connect with, like, automatically. There's no forcing it, there's no, you know, it's just it's just there. Um, and I think you kind of see that with them right off the bat. And I love that about them. But I think with Aster and her life with Trig, you know, it's, it's just so in the way that she thinks it's supposed to be, in the way that it's kind of been set up for her by her family. But even your dad is like encouraging it. Right, right. So I think it's that feeling of dipping your toe in the other boat, but you know, kind of being too scared to to you know, make the leap. And I think she kind of borders that a lot um, throughout throughout the film. You know, she's leaving this really comfortable, loving spot um, to kind of dive into something that's really unknown. What I what I like about this, and I think teenagers and high, and high school kids will enjoy about the film, it doesn't dumb, dumb anything down. I don't think. You know, I, I actually like, as I said, I think like adults will enjoy it as well. I don't see it as a uh, as a teen movie. I remember Alice telling me like she was originally writing it as older people uh, when she was writing the script and then decided to put it in high school as yeah. opposed to like, let me have a high school love triangle. I don't think that's how she was approaching it. You know, right. kind of dealing with a lot of themes that I think people of all ages go through and then putting it in high school where like the emotions are so intense and everything's like life or death and you're figuring yourself out and what are you gonna do with your life? And, you know. The message I hope people can take away from this is, you know, love is a really broad spectrum. And if you have a beating heart, I think you're capable of giving love. And I think everybody's deserving of love, whatever kind of love that may be. 
um, platonic or, or, or romantically. And I think everybody deserves in some aspect or form to feel accepted. There's a, a nice speech that, that, uh, that Ellie has talking about, you know, it's not looking for your perfect other half. And I think that's a nice message of feeling like we're all kind of born, at the, the opening you know, titles of the film, like we're all born whole and you don't have to be searching, you know, for this other person to make you feel complete. What is the first thing you're gonna do after quarantine ends? Just, you know, back to the old audition grind, but happy to be doing it, you know? It's the name of the game, right? <laughs> Uh, sometime during the summer, uh, this movie, Feel the Beat, will be on Netflix, which is the one I filmed right after uh, The Half Fit. Remember, you guys came over to my house and I like told you I had like, just gotten the job? Like, yeah. So that, and that's um, the first time where I kind of have the male uh, lead role, so I'm excited about that.